What's up, y'all? It's me, it's your boy Asmongold, and today we're going to talk about how to start rating. Now, a lot of people ask me about this, and I figured I would do it because I did a video a while back on how to get into a progression guild, and there's going to be some overlap between that video and this one, but we're going to get right down back into the basics for this video in terms of like what to kind of expect in guilds, you know, all the, the basic things that you really need to do to get into a rating guild, and I'm going to tell you guys about some of my experiences, and hopefully that'll help you understand where I'm coming from. And also, we'll go over the things that I think are important in terms of getting into a guild. Now, the first thing is, if you want to start raiding, and the reason I'm talking about getting into a guild and raiding, they're basically going to be used synonymously in this uh, in this video, or interchangeably, you know, whatever you want to say. Uh, I don't think synonymously is a word. Either way, so if you're in a guild that can't kill Heroic Margok, no, last boss Imperator Margok, you're not in a guild. You're in a pug, okay? So... If you're not in a guild that can at least kill the last boss on, on the second at hardest difficulty, you probably should reevaluate what you're doing. And there are some exceptions to this, okay? And those exceptions are if you're not really serious about raiding. If you don't really care, you're just in a guild full of your friends, and it's just like, whatever, we go in there and we clear some bosses, and that's about it, right? But if you're actually taking raiding seriously, and you're devoting a, I guess, like a scheduled time out of your day or out of your week to raid, you probably should be at least on Mythic Kargath minimum, okay? And so I do want to say that, and I don't want to come off like an asshole or anything like that, but you really should set your sets higher if you actually care about rating. Now, the first thing we're going to look at here, I guess, is how to take uh, your first steps. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can do this, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk to you guys about kind of what I did and uh, how this, the first steps that I took and also, you know, relate that to what I'm saying, as well as some of the things, you know, my own experiences, so you guys can kind of understand where I'm coming from, I guess. Now, the most important thing uh, in terms of, I guess, like getting into a guild, getting anything done in any sort of an atmosphere where you require the cooperation of other people is networking. And I don't really like to do this a whole lot in, like, the real world, and I think it's, like, really kind of overblown a little bit too much. But I do think it's very important, and I don't want to downplay its importance. Now, what I mean by networking is uh, not setting up routers or anything like that, but actually communicating and making a group of friends, or at least making connections with one other person or like a few other people, and watching that branch out to open up other opportunities for you. Now, an example for this is, um, I remember I was in Arathi Basin, and this was in 2006 or 2007, and... One of the most important things with this is to be able to recognize and see opportunities whenever they appear. Now, people say, oh, you only got one shot. Well, this is an eight mile, guys. Like, you get plenty of shots. Don't even worry about it. But it doesn't make any of the little shots any less important. Now, I remember I was in a rafty basin, 2006, 2007, sitting there. And it was pretty late. I had just got back from my dad's house or whatever. And I had some guy from the best guild on the server ask me if I wanted to be an arena team with them. And uh, they mentioned that the guild leader was on the arena team. And back then, I was one of the top PvPers on my server. And I was pretty much the only warrior who was actually like worth a shit in terms of PvP. And so, obviously, they would come to me. And so, I immediately agreed to it. And I remember screenshotting it at that exact point. I don't know if I have the screenshot or not. Or, I mean, if I do, I would take like a million years to find it. But either way, I remember screenshotting it because I knew what that would lead to. And whenever I got to know those guys, um, I eventually she quit my guild, and they saw that I didn't have a guild, and they eventually invited me into their guild. And so that's actually how I have got into my first raiding guild, my first serious raiding guild. I had been in shitty raiding guilds before that, but my first real raiding guild, that's how I did it. I made a connection, and it wasn't even through raiding. You know, I, I was just a PvPer, and I joined, and it's taking those little steps and knowing whenever the opportunities are available and taking advantage of them. Opportunities, as I said before, there will be a lot of opportunities, but that doesn't mean that any of them are any less important. You have to make sure that you take advantage of them. So me being able to utilize my networking through the PvP was actually what led to me getting a raid spot in that PvE guild. Because a couple of months later, or actually about a few months later, yeah, um, they didn't have a warrior for Brutalis. And Brutalis was, uh, he was a very hard DPS check. He was the equivalent of like Mythic Butcher now or something like that. And so they needed a arms warrior. And, you know, who happened to be an arms warrior? The only arms warrior in the guild with, like, some of the best gear on the server was your boy Asmongold. And so they asked me to come in there, even though I was in full PvP gear. And so I was, that was my chance. And so that was another opportunity that I saw. You know, you have to be able to see opportunities ahead of time and not look back and say, hey, I could have done this. You know, see opportunities and take advantage of them 100%. 
And that's what I did with that. And so that was my first step into raiding with them. And, um, you know, come Wrath of the Lich King, which was, you know, I don't know, like six months later or so, uh, you know, I had all kinds of different stuff that I could do uh, with that guild. And I was actually in the raiding team as a, as a solid core member, one of the one of the real core members in that guild. And so those are the steps that I took to get into my first real raiding guild. And so anyway, uh, networking with other people. And so what this really means, that means actually talking to them, being friends with people. If you don't really like to be friends with people, you're probably going to have a hard time getting into good guilds because a lot of people kind of treat the guild as an extension of their personal life. And so if you aren't really going to play into that, they're not going to be that, much, that uh, I guess, like important or they're not going to treat you as you're as important as somebody who that, who is like that, basically. And so anyway, uh, what this also comes down to is it add people to battle tag whenever you play with somebody who's good, who you're friends with, who, you know, they say, hey, great job. You know, hey, thanks, man. You know, do you want to be on battle tag so we can play again later? Uh, add people on Skype, you know, whatever else. And if you can make a connection like talking to someone, it's a lot stronger than making a connection typing. And so if you can actually talk to someone and like, you know, tell a couple jokes and everything else, you're going to be in a lot better spot in terms of, I guess, like, as I said before, making a connection with this person. Now, not all connections pay off. I've had a lot of people who, um, you know, I've known for a long time and I've just, you know, I always raided with them, but then they kind of always sucked. And so I was just like, it just kind of happens. Like, not all networking uh, connections pay off, but you really only need one or two of them to really pay off uh, for it to be worth it entirely. And so that's the first thing. Make sure that you're always able to network with other players, make friends, and, uh, you know, like kind of build up a, uh, you know, I guess like a group around yourself to where if you can actually, uh, you know, if you need something, you can have these other people help you. And so that's the most important thing before you can get into a guild. Now, after that, uh, one of the, I guess like the big questions that I always, I always get from people and like people always complain about this, and it's the same catch-22 that you uh, that I guess like you encounter in the work workplace or in like real life getting a job, which is you have to have experience to get a job, and you can't get a job unless you have experience. And so how are you going to get experience if you don't have a job? And so guys, this is real simple. You do the same thing that I do in real life, is you just make it up, and that's the best way to do it. Now in Warcraft, uh, this is actually even easier. Now what you can do in Warcraft is you just link a fake achievement. I had a buddy the other day, uh, not really buddy, but a guy that um. He asked me a question on Ask FM, and he asked, you know, how can I get into this Imperator Mar Margot group? And, um, you know, because I don't have the achievement, they won't let me in without the achievement. I just link him a fake achievement website. He just generates the achievement, sends him the achievement. He says, hey, look, I've got the achievement. That's all there is to it. And so that kind of makes things a lot easier for you. Now, obviously, people are going to call you out on it occasionally. But really, guys, think about this. Think about this. Is it after you get that achievement for real, all you have to do is fool one group, and then you've got the achievement. You see what I'm saying? That's all you have to do is fool one group. And so, guys, I did this all the time in Wrath of the Lich King. And I would just link fake achievements all the time. And in Cataclysm, I didn't really have to because I was in a good guild. But in Wrath of the Lich King, like midway through, I was in kind of a garbage guild. And so I would always make stuff up. I was I was plugging things all the time. And so I would have to link fake achievements, um, tell people my year score was higher than it was. So, like, if somebody asks you... Um, you know, like what your item level is, and you know that they're asking for a certain item level, just add a couple add a couple numbers onto that. And if they ask you like, oh, hey, I looked you up and you're not that high, just say I equipped something else, I just bought something off the auction house and it's not updated on armory or something like that. Just a quick way to, to, you know, confuse them. Because, I mean, if you can really, if you really can put out the numbers or whatever else, and they're going to kind of hold you back for that. Well, I don't really say it's too much of a, uh, I guess like an ethical, um, or moral, I don't know, like deviation to just lie about it to begin with, and it's it's not really that big of a deal, I don't think, anyway, because if they were if they really care, they would look you up on Armory. So it's not like you know that they can't prevent this either way. And so anyway, uh, that's probably the best way to get into groups that don't really, I guess, like that require you to have some sort of an achievement or something like that. Is you just link a fake achievement or link another achievement that's like, let's say you used to raid a while ago. And you're coming back, link achievement that, you know, hey, I'm coming back from raiding, you know, I have this girl really get achievement. So, like, if it was me in, uh, in uh, Wrath of the Lich King again, what I would link is I would link uh, the Immortal. And because, like, Immortal was, like, clearing Next 25 before, uh, what do you call it, before World War came out. And so I actually had, had done that, and, like, my guild had, like, a really, really good ranking on, like, whenever we got that achievement. And so whenever people would ask me, even in ICC, i just link the Immortal and they'd invite me. Because just link some achievement that, you know, that will give them some sort of indication that you're a good player. Now, besides that, uh, now we're going to talk about kind of, I guess, like what you have to do before you get into the raid. Now, obviously, um, 
you know, there are a lot of things you have to do while you're in the raid in terms of like not causing trouble, not dying to stupid stuff, you know, sir, sir, sir. Don't kind of make yourself, don't make people have to make an exception to deal with you. And that's like one of the big things is because some people, they just all the time, like there's always some sort of thing that you've got to deal with with them. Oh, they're disconnected. They've got to go AFK. Try not to be that guy. It's just, oh, it's the worst. And it's like every guild has some of them and there's just no way really to deal, to, to prevent it entirely. But, you know, just try to make sure it's not you. So the main thing that you really want to do in terms of how to start raiding is you want to make sure that you're ready to do the fights. Now, uh, that involves a number of different things. Now, one of the obvious things that involves is you have to know what the fights are. You have to be prepared for them. Now, I am probably the worst example of anybody to be telling you this because I remember whenever we were doing Dragon Soul, I thought that we were going to fight Altraxian when we went in the Gara's room because it was in the Eye of Eternity and Malagos was there and he was a dragon too. And I thought Ultraxion was a dragon. I actually didn't even know that. And so I'm like notorious for being clueless about fights. But now that we've gotten into High Mall, I'm pretty much, you know, on top of everything. And so make sure that you are too. And I definitely didn't come into the guild looking like that or acting like that. Before I came into the guild, I was 100% ready and prepared. And, you know, getting into the guild, you know, establishing my reputation towards people take me seriously. I was always ready and prepared to do everything that people needed me to do. And, you know, all that other stuff. And so make sure that you look the fights up. Now, there are a couple of different places where you can look up the fights. Now, one of the best uh, YouTube channels for actual, like, fight guides is Fat Boss. And they are really, really good in terms of, like, because they're in a very good guild. And so they're pretty good at kind of explaining the fights and showing people the fights. Now, I don't really know about, like, the high mall fights. I was going to do a couple of them myself because we have a little bit weird different strats. But either way, uh, what it comes down to is they're probably one of the best places to look in terms of guides on how to do a fight. Uh, also, icyveins.com is one of the better places, one of the better websites if you want to read about the fights. And also, if it's not really a super um, you know, bleeding edge of progression thing, uh, try and look up the fight uh, under your perspective. Like if you're a melee DPS, and it's even better if you can do it. It's like, like if you're an arms warrior, look up an arms warrior doing it. But minimum, uh, try and at least find like a healer, a tank, or a DPS, range DPS, me or melee, whatever, uh, that has done the fight and try and look up that video and figure out what they do and break that down and see what really has to be done. And so whenever you go into the fight, you're not the idiot that died to, you know, to, died to the fire or whatever else. And so that's really important. Also, um, if there's no real information that you can find, you can just Google the boss fight and you'll probably find something else. Now, this is a, probably an even more obvious one, is you have to have your character, like, I guess, like, optimized to, to a pretty good extent. Now, that means you want to have weapon and ring and, like, neck enchants, of course, and know what the right enchants are. And again, one of the best places to look is called uh, icyveins.com. Now, that's one of the main places where I look whenever I want to look for, I guess, like, information. And another place is called simulationcraft.org. And what they do is they pretty much just run simulations on what talents are going to be the best for what situations and pretty much what to expect out of uh, out of your gear. Uh, AskMrRobot.com is another good place to look at what's going to be a good upgrade for you and what's not. And what it really comes down to though is you want to know what stats are best for you so you can know how to use those stats and you also want to know what talents to use for what fights. Now as a warrior there are a lot of fights that you want to use Bladestorm and then there are some other fights that you want to use Bloodbath. And so uh, you know, coming into a fight, one of the uh, one of the elements of being prepared is to know which fight is which, and so you should go into it already knowing that kind of stuff. So again, you don't hold everybody back because you don't know what's going on. Now, uh, something that's also another website here is called Warcraft Logs. Now, this is what's going to be pretty important because in almost any serious guild, you're going to have to fill out an application. Now. Not all applications are bad, and people, like, some people think, oh, I shouldn't have to fill out an application, you know, this isn't a job. Well, honestly, man, like, if you're if you're raiding for, like, like, we raid 12 hours a week, and we hardly raid at all. Like, there are a lot of guilds that raid for, like, 20, 25 hours a week. It's like, you're going to raid more than you actually even go to a job, and you're not going to spend, like, 5 or 10 minutes filling out an application, like, an hour tops filling out an application. Come on. It's like, if you... If you have the attitude that you're like too good to, I guess, like fill out an application, to be honest, you're probably an asshole, and it's better for everybody that you don't have to deal with anybody, or that they don't have to actually, especially they don't have to deal with you. If you think that you're entitled or better than you know filling out a, a 20 minute application. Now, obviously, there are some applications that ask kind of weird questions. Um, I don't really answer a lot of like real personal questions. I remember I had to apply on one site. Uh, it had to do with my YouTube account uh, in terms of like being a guest, being a guest on a show. 
and I had to provide my last name and you know or like a lot of like my real life information and I didn't really put on all that stuff on there and you know there comes a there comes a point where it's like okay this is too much information and you don't need this but uh, usually it, things are pretty much I guess like I don't know like not not if they're not too intrusive I wouldn't really worry about it too much but you should always expect to have to do an interview and uh, oh also an interview but an application usually leads to the interview now in an application you're gonna have to do a couple of different things now uh, I talked about this in my progression rating guide to uh, you know how to get into progression guild is it a couple of things that you might want to make sure that you do and that you don't do on applications now this is funny because like you know of the la of all the people to be telling you guys this is me is that you don't say like fuck or like a bunch of other stuff there's a bunch of profanities on your uh, on your application and the reason for that is it's like if you can't is like think about it. it's like if somebody can't go through a sentence without saying fuck man they've got they've got a, you gotta buy them a dictionary because there's a lot of other words and so they could mean a couple of different things is for one this person is out of control and I mean like do you want a wild beast on your rating team probably not and so also it could also mean that they're like a little kid and they're just like you know one of those you know like one of the kids that you play with on Xbox Live and so that's gonna be all kinds of problems and also uh, another thing is that they're just not very good at communicating And if you have somebody you don't really want to have someone who's not really good at communicating and it's always important to make sure that you can communicate with people and another thing that has to kind of I just do with that is that whenever you fill out your application, don't complain about the guilds that you used to be in. Like, uh, you know, say, oh, everybody, everybody in this guild hated me. You know, this guild was full of assholes. This guild was full of idiots. You know, whatever else. You know, they were all like kind of I guess uh, out to get me. Like, man, like, as an uh, as a rule, as a rule, like as I do, I do recruitment for my guild. As a rule, if anybody ever says anything even remotely similar to that, I just decline. That's it. It's done. Application decline. I don't even look at their look at their percentiles or how much DPS or HPS they do because this person is going to be trouble. It's like how many times do you know that somebody's not not the common denominator and somehow they're they're not always the problem? Like it's always that way. Like if if every single time you go somewhere the same thing happens, it's probably your fault. Okay, that's just what it comes down to. Now I'm not really trying to blame the victim here. But let's just get down to reality. And as a guild, you know, if you're trying to if you're trying to lead a guild, you know, from my perspective, I don't want to have people like people who people who have problems are problems, and that's what it comes down to. And so try not to have problems. Also, uh, if you don't fill out like a lot of you know, there's like usually it's like you filled out anything online. There's like little boxes you've got to fill out. Try to fill out all the boxes and fill them out correctly. Uh, we have a question on our application. Uh, to post a screenshot of yourself in raid combat. Now we get people all the time who are sitting at Stormwind, you know, posting up on the clock tower, taking a screenshot, putting it up on the website. Though no, I don't really always hold that against people, but I take it into account because it's again, it's someone who is is a failure to follow directions. And I mean, if you can't follow written directions that are right there, that you there's no real time limit on how long you have to understand these or anything like that, and you just you can't even fill out a basic thing like that there's there's probably also going to be other problems you know where there's smoke there's fire okay uh, another thing is like people do that people have done that to me and I just decline the app if they don't if they don't fill out a lot of the boxes they're like oh you know I don't think I should have to fill this out well I don't think I should have even to go you know it's not really a big deal uh, also if you don't meet the requirements to a guild like uh, some guilds require you to be on at certain times. Like my guild, we raid uh, Monday through Wednesday, 7 to 11 server or 8 to 12 my time. And so if you can't meet those raid times, just don't even waste our time, please. And it's the same with a lot of other guilds. Like they don't want to have a read through an application. And it's like, it always sucks because like whenever you get somebody who's a good player and they can't meet your raid times, it's really disappointing. And so make sure that, uh, you know, if you're, if you can actually, I guess like, you can meet the raid times that's great but if you can't don't bother and waste your time and there are also other requirements that certain guilds have um like some guilds like uh have an age requirement like we have an age requirement we don't like to have people who are under 18 in our guild and the reason for that is you know if you're under 18 you don't really have the same control over your life as you do whenever you're over 18 just because you know you're not a minor and uh that's really kind of like some guilds do that some guilds don't i found that almost all successful guilds do that now, uh, the way that I got around this whenever I was 17 or 16 getting into a guild is I just lied. I just said I was 19, you know, and that was it. And so if you're really that good, like we had people lie in our, in our guild and like two years later we found out that they just turned 18 
and we're like, oh, you got us, you know, and that's all there is to it. But I mean, almost always, almost always it never works out. And that's just really all there is to it. But either way, uh, that's more of a higher level guild thing. Uh, most lower level guilds don't really expect that too much. And another thing, guys, uh, is that if somebody is like, I remember I had this one, oh, God, this guy was, this is probably one of the, the dumbest applications I've ever read in my entire life. And um, I think I, I like almost gained an extra chromosome because I read this application. And so I, um, I read the application and like there was no capitalization, no punctuation, no nothing, okay? And I'm not a grammar Nazi, okay? But if you can't even capitalize the first word in the sentence, we're going to have some problems, okay? Because it's not that it matters really, it's just that you don't care. Because anybody who's old enough to use a computer and fill out an application and play this game, get to level 100, whatever, level 90 at that, at that time, is able to, will have already gone through school and knows how to capitalize and punctuate sentences. And so if you're not able to do that, that's again another indicator of just not caring. And so make sure that you always do that. And uh, people say, yeah, he told me that he was like uh, not um, not autistic, the other one that's similar to that, uh, where, they, where they can't write. I don't really cr quite remember the name. And because uh, people used to always say that I had this too because I was bad at like spelling stuff and everything else like that. But in reality, I just didn't care. And so I think that that was really what it comes down to for a lot of people. Now, I know some people have disabilities or whatever else, and that sucks. But again, whenever you take on a disability, you are also taking that disability on for your entire guild. And so make sure that you can, you know, you can either back it up or just don't do that because, you know, your guild kind of trusts you to, I guess, like recruit people that won't hold them back. And so you have somebody that can't communicate and you know it becomes more of an issue uh also try to apply to guilds and that's like kind of more for guild leaders but it's just look at it from their perspective uh also for some guilds like they're gonna ask you like if it's an, an australian guild you know there's gonna be a problem with the times and also with latency and uh, same with like european guilds and so try to find a guild that's in your native language and also that's in uh, i guess like your time zone or relatively to your time zone so you're not really going to have too much trouble in terms of finding, uh, I guess, like finding time to raid and, uh, you know, like fitting it into your schedule. Because usually most raiding guilds, it happens during the evening. And so anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have, I guess, like kind of written down. Oh, the interview. We will talk about this. I'll talk about this just, just for a few minutes. Let me see how long this video is. Oh, boy. So this video is kind of long. I do apologize, but I kind of want to make sure that this is as thorough. And I also like to tell you guys about some of my own experiences so you can really know, you know, kind of how I dealt with it and where I am now and just all that other stuff. I'm not saying really do exactly what I do, but those are what that's what worked for me. OK, so for the interviews, um, almost always they're going to ask you to get into Vent, get into Skype, get into Mumble, get into TeamSpeak, whatever else. I don't think there's another one. Is there? I don't, I don't even know. But the point is, you're going to have to do some kind of verbal Vent interview or yes, yes, just automatically say Vent, but um, some sort of verbal interview. Um, if that bothers you, um, you know, like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I didn't really know the bomb shelters got good enough reception to even get on the internet, but either way, if it does bother you, you probably should come out of your shell. And also, uh, as again, like this is another thing where like it comes really kind of comes back to everything is that don't, I guess, like hold people back by your own, I guess, like, uh, limitations. And so like, you can't get online, you know, you have bad latency, you know, try and solve all those problems uh, before you even try and get into a guild. Just because, I mean, again, it's easier for you to stay in the guild, and it's also easier for them so they're not frustrated with you and everything else. And so the interview is like usually, like the way I do an interview, I did an interview with a guy today, it took like 13 minutes or something like that, because like Skype like records the amount of time. And so uh, I just kind of went through the basic information, asked him a couple questions, and that was pretty much it. Um, Sometimes I go through really, really long, uh, you know, detailed VIN interviews when I'm not really sure entirely should I bring somebody into the guild or not. And so uh, be pretty much pre prepared and expecting that and just answer questions. Like usually, uh, it's like really guys, they're just getting to know you. It's not really a big deal. Don't get nervous or anxious about it. Like I, I know, I mean, like everybody does whenever they have to perform or, you know, this sometime, somehow like I guess like matters to them. But really, it's not that big of a deal. I don't really take it that seriously. Um, you know, I did a, a, an interview, or sorry, a video on interviews and all that other stuff. And so I know that, you know, people might be surprised, but usually I don't really take them very seriously. I just kind of 
go on there, I make sure that, you know, this person is like, what kind of we're looking for, you know, there's no real glaring problems, ask them a couple questions and just move on. And so that's usually what you can kind of expect. Sometimes the interviews are really long just so they can get to know you. Sometimes they're just pretty short so they can just, you know, like pretty much make sure that all the information is correct and make sure that you're on the same page with all the little details. And so anyway, guys, um, I think that that's pretty much all the things that I really want to talk about today. Now, there's a lot of other, <clears throat> sorry, there are a lot of other things that really kind of have to do with star reading. But again, uh, I'll just recap and all that other stuff just so if people, I guess, have forgot anything and, you know, just what you really kind of need to know is that make sure that, you know, your character is optimized and prepared and you should find that information out on icveins.com. That's should probably be your number one stop. Everything else besides that, uh, you know, could probably be equally helpful, but that would be the first place that I would go. Uh, other than that, uh, you want to make sure that you are ready to do boss fights, that you, you're you able to get into a good guild, because I mean, if you're not in a good guild, you are just significantly like limiting the rating potential because it's just it's just infinitely more important to be in a guild than not in a guild like that's probably the most important thing in terms of like your progression rating is what guild you're in and so anyway um i mean outside of like normal modes like normal modes it doesn't matter but if you're planning on doing heroic and mythic you've got to really be in a good guild and so anyway um if you can't get into a good raid you know they need a certain amount of achievements just link fake achievements uh everything else like that so anyway guys uh that's pretty much the important things that you guys need to know. And if y'all have any questions, whatever, just go ahead and ask me. I, I have no problem answering them. Like I've been doing guild, I've been in guilds or like doing recruitment for guilds, whatever else for like over five years. And so let me see, it's 2015. Yeah, over five years. And so I've got some pretty good experience about it. And so anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I've got. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.